So yeah, I'm a professor in the biology department. Uh, actually, my specialty, my PhD was studying rattlesnakes. Okay, right? But um, I do get to teach now in physiology. I do get to teach other courses like this. So I do want to share some things about the eye. Um, I guess before I do, uh, I do, you know, sometimes we, we come to these conferences and we go back and we, we think about just how wonderful the, the stuff that we have learned is. Uh, certainly, we, we were getting some good ideas about you know, evidence that we can use to support that the yeah, the premise that there is a creator. Uh, but sometimes we, we, we need to remember that those on the other side are people too. So I was just looking in the back, there's a sheet of fallacies back there, and one of them is from Richard Dawkins, he talks about if anyone doesn't believe in evolution, then they are either uh, ignorant or stupid or evil. And that's a little bit off where we want. Obviously, we don't think we're ignorant or stupid or evil. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes we need to turn that around. And we need to remember that people who are in academia, who specialize in evolution, are also not ignorant or stupid. They are also children of God. They are also made in His image. And so, you know, if we ever interact with some of those people, we need to remember that. And be respectful and gracious, and remember they are also created in the image of God. But let's get into this here. Um, we're going to talk about the eye. So this is the vertebrate eye. So uh, this is a structure that even Darwin, in his book, The Origin of Species, uh, was kind of challenged by because it seems intricately designed to do what it does. There's a lens forming the image on the retina. All the parts work together. However, in, within evolutionary biology, there is this idea that no, it isn't a designer that did this. If you think back, that given. Yeah, Gibson last night talked about Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins has a book called The Blind Watchmaker. And basically that book he's arguing that the design there does seem to be design in biology, but it is a blind designer. There is no foresight. Evolution, the idea just sort of cobbles things together as best it can. It may not be perfect, but it works. And one of the places that comes up is actually talking about the eye. And it's here in the back, right? If we look in the back, Actually, let's go back here, right? So, all right, so light obviously comes in through here, which is the cornea through the lens, and comes back and hits the retina. And it's the retina that people have looked at and said, well, maybe it doesn't seem to make intuitive sense. So here's a picture of the retina, and what we're looking at up here, this is, would be the back of your eye. Um, this part from here down to here, this is the retina. And what you see as you look at it is at the very back, you have these cells, these uh, ret um, retinal pigmented epithelial cells. They're dark. And right after that are these. These are the rods and cones. So the cones are shaped more like this. These are rods. And that is the actual cell that detects the light. And then in front of that, we have all of this. This is essentially the nerve wiring. All right? And so what people have noted is, as you look at this, if this is the back of the eye and this is the front, Light is coming through this direction. Essentially, imagine that you had a bunch of microphones. Let's say you have a choir up on the stage. And instead of facing the microphones towards them, you face the microphones away from them, and you put the cords of the microphone towards them. Now, would the microphones pick up sound? They would. Would it be optimal? No, and that's what they're pointing out. They're kind of saying, wait a minute, if this were intelligently designed, a designer would have put these light-sensitive cells out in front, out here, and the wiring behind, so the vertebrate retina is wired backwards. And so that is the idea. So this is from a book. This is from a 2018 book by an evolutionary biologist named Lentz here, Nathan Lentz. And what he has said, this is part of his book. He said, this is not an optimal design for obvious reasons. The photons of light must travel around the bulk of the photoreceptor cell in order to hit the receiver tucked in the back. When you're speaking into the wrong end of a microphone, you can still make it work, provided that you turn the sensitivity of the microphone way up and you speak loudly. The same principles apply for vision. And so what I'm saying then is because this kind of this is a relic of history. Somehow evolution got off to the wrong foot and then 
try to correct its mistake. We have something that works, but if the designer were to do this, they would do something different. So this is not intelligently designed. It was cobbled together by evolutionary processes. He goes on to say, to date, there is no workable hypothesis to explain why the vertebrate retina is wired backwards. It seems to have been a random development of stuff because correcting it would be very difficult to pull off with sporadic mutations. The only tool evolution has in its toolkit. Now, I was interested because of this idea he's claiming there is no workable hypothesis. And what I'm going to do here is challenge that notion. I think there is one. Um, and it's interesting that all the parts of it that I have found actually precede 2018. So I kind of think you might have needed to know about this. But anyway, so is it wired backwards? <coughs> now, first of all, let's consider what's happening back here. It's actually rather interesting uh, the amount of energy and the metabolism that happens in these rod and cone cells. Uh, they actually are using a whole lot of energy. Um, and the reason for that is that, um, let's go here. Yeah, there are 92 million around 4.6 million cones, roughly, in the back of your eye, these are the light sensitive cells. And each one of them has to, um, basically needs to use energy in order to, to make it work. This is the, the pigment of the eye. And basically, it is the molecule that receives the photon. And every time a photon hits it, it needs a little bit of energy in the form of ATP to reset the system. So just you looking at me, every time a photon that's reflected off of me hits your eye, there's a bit of energy that's needed to reset the system. All right? And so it is burning. The metabolism is very high. It said, you know, that ATP is the gasoline that your cells run on. It says you use about your body's weight worth of ATP every day to, to run your body. And about 10% of that is actually your retina, which are only about half a gram in the back of your eye. So it's super high metabolism. And so these cells have to be close to a blood supply. And you see that blood supply back here. That's the next layer that they're up next to. These cells here help facilitate. They absorb waste products in that high metabolism environment. They're trying to supply it with the energy it needs in terms of glucose in that environment. And so it's been suggested then that these cells have to be close to the blood supply to maintain that high metabolism. Otherwise, if you rewire it, they couldn't get the blood they needed for your, for your retina to work. All right, but then what do you do with this other problem of you have all this wiring in print? Well, let's move here. There has been the discovery in 2007 of these things called Mueller cells. These are glial cells. These are cells that are supportive of uh, neurons. And if they discovered in 2007 that these things are actually living fiber optic channels. They actually catch the light up here, direct it around all the wiring, and go directly back to the rod and cone cells. They direct the light back there, such that the problem of obscuring your light, the light, because of all that wiring, goes away. So, here is one of those. You can see here, this is the Mueller cell. This is the rods and cones down here. They form these units, these columnar units, where there's one, usually one, sometimes two cones and rods, and they cradle those, they sort of wrap around them and hug them, and they do all kinds of stuff. Besides channeling the light, they're also setting up the chemistry in there to make sure that it's optimal for the nerves and the rods and the cones. They also shelter it from mechanical damage. So if you, know, you jar your body, it's not gonna move everything out of alignment because the Mueller cells are holding it in place. Yeah, moreover, there seems to be a, a system that these Mueller cells actually improve. You know, you might argue if you're an evolutionist that this is the a system that evolution sort of cobbled together to overcome the initial bad design. But it turns out that these cells actually improve your vision. In other words, your vision is better because they are there than if they were not there. Because they do several things. They channel the light, they make your uh, color vision more crisp by directing the light directly to the cone cells at minimal cost to um, your night vision, which is directing light to the rod cells. All right? So your vision is better off this way. And so what you end up with is two things going on. 
Number one, these, um, you need to have this particular design of your retina because firstly, those um, cells, those rotting cone cells need to be down here where the blood supply is, otherwise the system wouldn't work. And two, you have these Mueller cells directing the light directly down to them and your vision is better because of them. So what we have now is a hypothesis and a system that looks maybe not intuitive, but once you understand a little bit more how it works, it looks really elegantly designed. And it's interesting, you can find this in the literature. I did find this paper, and this is from an expert here, um, Rockenbach here from this um, uh, university in Germany. And lo and behold, this is what he says, how do I to improve the inverted retina? This is no flaw in nature. So notice this is a 2014 paper, and Lentz wrote his book in 20, uh, 2018. So yeah, he said, yeah, although many open questions remain, these results convincingly demonstrate that Mueller and photoreceptor cells are optimally adapted to compensate for the main, quote, disadvantage of an inverted, ver uh, inverted vertebrate retina, namely light scattering along the path of the image towards the sensors. And so we can see a beautiful design here, in spite of the claims otherwise, and we can affirm what Psalms 139 14 says, right? I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Thank you. Thank you.